What's up guys? Welcome to another React video. Today we're going to be exploring something that's, that can be a little bit quite challenging. But what we're going to be exploring is how to make API call in React, right? Well, before we get any further, let's actually just go ahead and create a React component. Uh, a component that technically, if we see this, we should be having a component that looks like this welcome to my app well how can we use api requests if you guys remember from one of the session we talk about react lifecycle we're going to use this one called react uh, component did mount and there you go here i'm going to go ahead and fetch my data and uh, this is going to return a promise i'm going to do that then and that catch and these two are going to return a promise so i could go ahead and kind of set up a function for them the, that then is tells it's going to be a chain of, of them. Now it's going to take JSON, something like this. And the whole reason we're doing this is to make sure that the result that we are getting are actually going to be JSON. We can do that then. And this one's also going to take a function. And there we go. The data are going to be here. And now we can go ahead and console log the data, something like that. And then we can do data, All right? All right. So what do we need inside of fetch? Well, this first method itself, it's a built in function in JavaScript. And the only thing that it takes, it takes a URL of the data that you want to fetch. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and go to GitHub and type GitHub API. That should be going ahead and try to find the GitHub API. I can click on this link and down this tab i click on wherever you guys see the search feature we're gonna be searching per user and over here i click on the user search user and once i click on this i can go ahead and kind of copy the the endpoint i can copy this entire url down here and paste it over here so this is gonna go and and copy or aka okay, go ahead and search a user name on tom and if I, if I refresh this, I should be able to console log the data that is coming in. There you guys go. You see, I have a, a total of 30 user named Tom, which is pretty awesome. So what do I want to do? Well, in this case, what I really want to do is I want to display every single user inside here that are named Tom. So that's the goal that I want to do. Remember, the data are coming in over here. So this is going to be we represent the data that are coming in once again. The, the data is this entire object within this object. I can do that item. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And within the item, I can go ahead and kind of look over every single item. All right. So what I want to do now is I'm going to say this is going to be equal to user and the user is going to be that data, that item, which is going to be representing every single array. So that's going to be an array of every single user. And I want to use this that set state to update my state with something called users. And I can make it equal to user. Now I'm going to define my state. And here I'm going to have within my state something called user. For now, it's going to be empty. All right, so let's go ahead and see and try to run this data. But before I run it, I'm going to console log my state just to see if the, the value in my state my uh, has been updated. Let's find out. Okay, all right, let's see what happened here. All right, when the page reload, you should go ahead and get the user. First time, first time my state is empty. And then after you get the data, now I have the user, all the user as an array within my state. So what do I want to do? I want to be able to display the URL or AKA the image of every single user that we get. For example, I want to display this user. Oh, that looks weird. But anyway, long story short, I want to display every single user that we get. Now, in order for me to do that, I'm going to set up a different function that's called display user. And within this function, this is where I'm going to go ahead and loop over every single item that is inside my side, my state. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, that state, that users. And I'm going to do that map in order to look over it. I'm going to say, all right, we'll look over every single user. And then once you find every single user, I want to have an href tag. And this href is actually going to contain every single image of every single user. All right, remember the map feature itself takes three parameters. For this one, it's going to be element and then the index and then the array. The only one that we're going to be using, we're going to use the element. What is this? Well, this element is going to be representing every single object inside this array. So if we are inside this object, we can just do element that you something to get access to the image. So let's do that element that they will give us access 
to, to the image. All right. So, and then the only thing that we need to do now is make sure that we are returning this entire thing. All right, let's find out what this does for us now, guys. And if we want to run this function, just need to copy it and go inside right after here. We're going to go ahead and render this function like so, call it, execute it. And there we go. We call this function and execute it as well. And we should be able to see something. Oh, we don't have an image. Well, let's fix that. It's because instead of having the curly bracket, it, this should be equal to a parenthesis instead. So no curly bracket here. It should be equal to a parenthesis. There you go. And now let's try this out. And we should be able to see all the image like this. Now there's a few cleaning that I'd like to do. This is every single image about every single user that names thumb. Now there's a couple of things that I like to do guys. First thing first is instead of having this parenthesis, I'm going to have everything on one line. All right, there we go. We have everything now on one line. Let's see if they still work or not. Yes, it still work. And the other thing I also would like to do is I can even go a little bit further with ES6. Instead of having the return, I can have it in everything under one line like this. Let's find out and see if this still work. Yes, it still work as expected. But the other thing I'd like to do is if you guys look at the console, it said each tile in an array needs to have a unique key while called prop. Well, what they were really talking about is within every single element, the first element inside this array needs to have a key prop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And there we go. And I'm going to make this one equal to the index that's going to be unique. So it's going to be zero, one, two, three, and so on. All right. So once we have this, that should be taken care of the row thing. And there we go. We no longer see something like that. And the other thing that I also would like to do is drop this one down onto one line, something like that. And let's see how it looks. There you go. And that should still be giving us the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we fetch data with uh, with using the fetch keyword. Now, there's a couple things that I'd like to mention here that is really, really important. If for any reason you're not using ES6, maybe you are using ES5 where you have function like that. And then uh, you are looking forward to update the state. Well, let's see and see if this works, right? Well, if we try this out, you see, we no longer have any image. And if we track down the issue, now the question is why, right? Well, everything seems to be right. We are getting the data, but we don't have anything inside our state. So our state was not able to be updating, even though we are consoling, console logging it. So what does that mean? That means this function that is trying to update the state is not working for any reason. Now the question is why? Well, the question, the reason it's not working is because of this, this keyword. What that means is this, this keyword is inside a function. If we try to console log it, we should be able to see something different. So I'm going to try to console log the, this keyword, this keyword on uh, this, and I'm going to say this uh, function. And I'm going to also console log in order this keyword inside component did mount just to kind of see the difference of why it's not being updated. All right, now let's find this out. Let's take a quick look at here, guys. All right, so we see that the first this, it's logging a lot of information about, it has access to the component higher things. Like it has access to context, state, it has access to updated, to different ordered things. But what about the order this? Well, this order this is equal to undefined. So it's not able to get access to this, that set state. That is in the, the other one. So if we look at this, we see state updater and different other thing. Well, how can we make sure that even though we are using ES5, that this this keyword is having access to to this this like it's the same one as this one. Well, what we can do here, we can define it to be something else called self. And instead of using this, we set it to self and self that should give us access to uh, the upper level of the disk keyword and now we have the same behavior again but this might sound confusing what is another way that we can do it well if we want to do it we can use this uh, we can bind it with the upper level thing what we can do here down here we can say bind this one with this keyword all right let's find this out and see if this works and that should be working as expected and there you guys go. This is something that you should definitely keep in mind. So the bottom line is whenever you are using this keyword in inside a function, you have to be mindful of how deep you are using the this keyword. Is it inside a function? And then it is also inside another function. Then you need to be mindful of which access that the this keyword has. Now to make things simple, we all we usually use uh, an arrow function which always refer to the upper 
higher level of the this keyword that you don't need to deal with this and we will still be having the same behavior the bottom line is this is how you do fetch uh fetch api requests using the built-in feature but there's a last thing that i haven't talked about is the cache keyword well the cache keyword is in case something happened for now i'm gonna go ahead and say uh, oops something happened something happened well, what does that mean? That means if you try to make the API request and something went wrong, maybe you misspelled the API, maybe the services is down. Well, this lines of code is going to fire if something happened. For now, nothing happened. Of course, we will see all the image, but let's say we had the API link wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and delete something from this, right? And now this is no longer a valid URL. What that mean is I'm not able, I will no longer be able to access data about Tom. And check this out, you see this lines of code, which is the catch with anything that is inside a cache now is being fired and said, oops, something happened. And this is a way to kind of throw error in case something happened with your API transaction. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this makes sense for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. If not, see you guys in the next video.